Chris. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, everyone who came here. Uh, I know it's these things are difficult and attending in person are really challenging uh, at some point for uh, people. So I really appreciate you had the chance to attend here and to start building community and, and get this networking done. So as uh, Chris was mentioning, uh, there's a new OSPO wave coming. Uh, new things are happening in the OSPO, in the OSPO industry. And this comes with new OSPO challenges that maybe uh, five years ago they weren't here, there, uh, because everything started as in tech and in, um, in the California area, in the Bay Area. But now that has happened completely. We are seeing OSPOs literally everywhere. And that brings us um, a lot of challenges in, in terms of diversity. Diversity is great, but sometimes that can be tough. So we are we are seeing OSPOs um, spans that spans across industries. As I said, it is not only in tech. We are seeing OSPOs in banking, education, retail, automotive, government. But this is not all. We are also seeing that it's, it's spanning across regions. Uh, it's not only in America now. It's also in Asia and in Europe, but that in the next talk, I will get more into detail, like what's happening in Europe and what things are we doing uh, in the uh, tutor group side. Uh, not only that, I mean, uh, it also spans across teams. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing a wide variety of OSPOs uh, being created in uh, software engineering and development, the office of the CDO, but others can be in marketing, even in legal. And that, of course, makes us difficult to see, to have a standard way of, okay, where should I start? And because, you know, it's not the same creating the OSPO in the legal team, because it has different objectives, diff different ways of doing things, different procedures than in engineering. And that, they, that makes things very, very difficult. And uh, I just wanted to share with you some, some of the articles I've been uh, collecting during the past, um, the past days, the past months, uh, about some um, research like we did, like uh, who's got an OSP, OPS production by industry, that is, uh, we've seen uh, more movement in other areas. Uh, people building academic OSPOs, uh, governments building OSPOs, and even in the automotive industry, that was, I think, uh, two weeks ago, Paris is launching the uh, new open source initiative. So as I said, diversity is great, but it's also challenging at the same time. And, and now the question is, how, how, how can we handle this as in, in the OSPO ecosystem? Because sometimes it's can, it can mislead people, right? So to, to explain this concept, I want to talk about rock climbing. Uh, has anyone done rock climbing at some point? Oh, that's great. Um, I, I started one year ago. I'm not really an expert, but I really enjoy doing that and uh, going to the mountains. Uh, it's one of my favorite passions. And um, if you've ever done rock climbing, and for those who doesn't, if you go uh, in groups, it's amazing. You'd some, what normally happens is that the first people that are climbing are the ones taking more risk because they need to uh, create the path to climbing and, and, and have this, um, uh, those are, uh, well, I think you cannot see it, but these little things, I think they're called bolts. So you need to uh, pace them and, and create the path and the way to others to climb. And also, they are the ones that are taking more risk because if they fall, they might also fall like uh, many more um, meters or inches than the other ones that are behind. So I see this as a similar thing to when thinking about OSPOs and the OSPO movement and the OSPO community. So there are people that were there uh, a few years ago and, and doing things for the first time. And then now in this new OSPO waves, there are others that are 
they need to climb. They need to make this effort of climbing, and and they can they, they need to that do that in order to to reach out to the top. But they're not alone, and they might find different strategies because uh, rock climbing is it's not about strength. For me, it's more about like okay, which which is the better way to get to the point? And sometimes you need to think, use your real brain and say, okay, this is the best strategy to follow. They might use a different, a different strategy, a different path to get to the same point, but they have this, this help from the ones that were there before. Uh, so as I was saying, there is no broad temple of building, of building OSPOs. And it's not the same when talking about OSPOs in company than when talking about OSPOs in governments or OSPOs in academics. Even if they are, we are talking about companies, the way that OSPOs are built in banking or in retail are not the same that the ones that has been uh, engaging with open source uh, over the last years and are in tech. Uh, but what we can do is collaborate and working together, build resources and, and have these open OSPO standards at some point from different voices and different perspective to help people and the others to, to create healthier OSPOs in the near future. Um, saying this, I would like to mention one of the one of the communities um, that are, have been building OSPOs and are the ones that are also um, helping to build this, this conference for you, there is the Tudum group. Uh, we've been, we started, I think like only 10 organizations and now uh, over the past few years we've grown until more than 70 organizations from OSPOs across different sectors, banking, retail, automotive and so on. And um, all these organizations are there to help people and bring this networking and this collaboration to run open source programs and, and drive open source movement across the divisions. Um, the main pillars that uh, we have in at Zero Group and uh, to build this OSPO movement um, are mainly five. So there is a big uh, thing going around the OSPO network. So uh, building places to connect and introduce to different OSPO professionals to others. So I think that's really, really important. Also, we work a lot in OSPO education, building resources such as the to-do guides or use cases to help others to know, okay, if I'm at Automotive and there was another company that were at Automotive before, how do I start? Oh, there is this guy that can help me um, start, start to climb. <laughs> Uh, also, OSPO training, we, we created the OSPO 101 courses to the ones that they say, hey, how do I start? I don't know anything. My, my organization just wanted to invest in OSPO and open source, but I don't know how to start. So there is this OSPO 101 course also that you can take and it's, it's free to do. And also OSPO tooling there, we, we are building some uh, tools that can help uh, certain OSPO activities and of course if anyone would like to have more tooling there and would like to contribute to this tooling we'll be happy to uh, to see how can we how can we keep this idea growing and finally OSPO research the OSPO servers are a great example uh, what Chris was mentioning earlier um, so it's about you know, building resources, building networking, and, and try to build things together. Having said that, I want, to, I want to make clear this thing that open source is a community of communities. So as I said, Tudor Group is one of the organizations that has been there uh, since 2012, like for a lot of years, have a lot of knowledge in resources, in how to build OSPOs, and we keep 
adding value to that as the new sport movement is growing, we try to improve and to adapt to those changes. But there are other communities that they are also uh, involved in open source movement and can help to OSP certain OSP activities like, I don't know, um, we have, uh, for instance, chaos that is community health analytics metrics to measure that can also be helpful to measure open source programs or open chains for open source compliance. I know um, OSPO plus plus is also around governments and institutions and has focus on that. So, you know, there is a lot of communities that we can build things together, which is, I think it, it's great because we can um, give to these OSPO professionals uh, the guidance and, and guide through the different areas of expertise. So I, I would like to call this like the, the community experts and, and, and have them also on board. Um, saying that, um, I would like to announce uh, here today at OSPOCON Europe um, this new uh, programs we are launching as an initial step of this collaboration with communities and also individuals that are making outstanding contributions to the OSPO movement. So um, still work in progress, may I say, <laughs> uh, but we, we would like to launch these programs, the OSPO ambassador programs and OSPO associate programs for community OSPO ambassadors for individuals making great contributions to, to the OSPO resources. And you will see news about these two, these two programs really soon. And also, of course, there is other ways to get involved. Um, we have a lot of resources, as I was mentioning. There is a, a new initiative we initially created uh, like two months ago, and it's getting a lot of popular, it's growing the popularity of uh, a lot of OSPO participants that are the OSPO News Studios letter where uh, we launch monthly newsletter about OSPO news that has happened over the next, over the, the past month uh, in terms of events, in terms of useful research um, uh, articles that are important for the OSPO ecosystems and so on. People can, of course, contribute to that and keep adding value. Uh, we have the Tudo community meetings that are public meetings made for everyone. Um, and what we basically do is having this um, community experts and guests on board talking about a specific topic. And then we gave, uh, we uh, go to questions and answers and some discussions and community discussions. We have OSPO discussions to, so people sometimes have the same questions and would like to sit somewhere. Or we have a Slack channel where there are really insightful conversations, but sometimes people just lose that. So there is where we store the OSPO discussions in case you miss anything. Uh, of course, the Ospology GitHub repo where uh, in case anyone wants to contribute to all, the all these resources, it's just opening an issue, opening a pull request, and people can add um, their contribution there. And the OSPO 101 training models that I um, explained earlier. Saying that, um, I would like to thank you once again to the wonderful OSPOCON program committee. Um, just a big, a big uh, shout out to them because um, I think this wouldn't be possible without their help. They're amazing. And yeah, I hope you really enjoy everything, all the OSPOCON Europe conference. And I don't know if Chris, you want to give your last thoughts. If not, yeah. So if you, I will. I will go to the next. My next. My next talk is about what to do in, in EU. So I will. I will just go and move to the next one. So thank you so much. Okay, so yeah, that was fast work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anna, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, so this is the next talk, and 
the reason why I wasn't supposed to be here, okay, to be honest. I was supposed to give the keynote, the first uh, presentations and, and that's all. But um, unfortunately, our uh, two speakers that were supposed to be here couldn't make it. As I said, it's, right now it's really difficult to be in person. And it's not only because of uh, travel restrictions, but even your own company can say, hey, you cannot travel. And it's disappointed, but things are the way they are. So first of all, I want to give a big shout out to Leslie and Alexius that are not here, but would have loved to be here with us today. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start sharing uh, two main insights from the OSPO survey we released uh, some weeks ago uh, that says, that remarks and highlights this, um, this fact that this new OSPO movement is happening. So they're, they're more interested, interesting in um, creating open source initiatives. There's more funding around. And also there are more people planning, the ones that doesn't have an OSPO, they're at least planning to have an OSPO in, in the next year. So big things are coming and, and that's, that's a reality. And getting to when I was mentioning that OSPOs are expanding, in this sec, what I want to focus more is on what's happening in Europe. Because, you know, it's, it's expanding all over the world. But in Europe, that's, that's something that is happening as well. And um, I wanted to share with you some of the uh, one recent study the Open Source Forum Europe released some time ago. Uh, about the open source status and, and the economical impact of open source right now. It's, if you haven't seen that study, I, this research, I really encourage you to, to take a look at it because uh, it's really insightful. Um, and as I was saying later, uh, okay, so OSPOs are expanding. In Europe, there's a big thing. People, if they don't have an OSPO, they, eventually they will have one and they, they are moving things to, to really have something. But the problem now is that these are new, a new OSPO era and these OSPO, people, OSPO professionals doesn't know yet how to get started. Okay, they have the funding, they have the team, but how, how, do, they think, how do they get things started? Because the point here is that it's trying to build new resources in terms of um, guiding new OSPOs to create open source program office in Europe. But the challenge here, apart from all the diversity I mentioned, is that European um, organizations are, are different, are different from other ways of doing things, for instance, in America. They have different needs, different time zones, for instance, when, create, when having networking sessions, uh, the different way of work, different regulations. So that, if, if that diversity, diversity was a challenge, this makes it even more challenging. And at Tudor Group, what we uh, started created uh, three years ago, I think, uh, Don can also corroborate. Okay, perfect. So um, it was three years ago. Uh, we started with the to do EU chapter to sharing perspective and resources for OSPO initiatives in Europe. And this initially started like an informal group of people that, hey, we have community meetings and all these gatherings are mostly held in, in, in the States and we want something here because, you know, uh, we cannot travel all the time and, now, and then when COVID started, the meetings are at different time zones and sometimes it's a pain in the ass for organizations that people based in Europe to attend to those meetings. So that initially started as an informal group of people uh, sharing perspectives. Um, and we, we have created uh, uh, some pillars where we build this Tudor chapter. So the first thing was to build an OSPO network and tech infrastructure and be able to collaborate to other communities to, to help 
uh, other OSPOs to uh, move things forward in Europe, cultivate, uh, grow and adoption of open source initiatives in Europe, and last but not least, build OSPO resources, maybe from the European perspective or uh, taking into account certain topics that uh, might be more important for organizations now building OSPOs in Europe that were not so important in other areas. As I said, it was started in uh, 2019, three years of experience. These are some of the participants. Um, it is not a closed source, it's open to everyone. So um, I, we encourage you to, to say hi, welcome. Um, we also created, uh, there are one main project we created uh, one year ago regarding um, the value of open source to business, like more European uh, related focused. Uh, we analyze the open source software in the European automotive industry, as well as uh, European smart cities initiatives driven by open source software. Uh, you, there is the link there. We will eventually upload this slide. So you can, all the links I'm sharing, you can go and check that resources as well. And we also doing some work in progress projects such as the EU total guides. As I said, we have total guides and they are great, but sometimes there are certain topics that the, e, uh, the European uh, organizations are demanding more and more often. So um, everyone is more than welcome to participate and share topics and uh, pro uh, share some ideas on what are the guys will be creating together. And the way on how to get involved. Um, as I said, we are building EU chapter sync meet synchronous meetings. So those are monthly meetings open to everyone. You just go to the link um, and say hi and, and you can you can get there to get to know all the OSPO professionals within Europe that has been building OSPOs for quite a long time, some of them. Uh, we have the OSPO discussions that we can also leave a space for certain topics uh, within Europe. GitHub repo to create and build new uh, initiatives together and the OSPO newsletter. Um, and finally, uh, I, this talk is, is about also not only to introduce the, what things have been doing in, in to do group and uh, to help the OSPO movement in Europe, but it's also to uh, bring with you a discussion of, okay, what, what other things would you like to see um, to, to improve and to help OSPOs uh, move forward here? Um, there are some ideas uh, we had on mind, such as creating mentoring programs like 101, or office hours, like one-on-one -on -one interactions with OSPO professionals and people that want to get into the OSPO industry, uh, some uh, OSPO run tables. Um, and yeah, well, my, my key thought here is like, I would like to know what are the ideas do you have on mine? Um, last but not least, we can now then proceed to the, to the discussions, but last but not least, I haven't introduced myself, so I would like to do so now uh, since I've been in the Turo group since June, um, but I've been in the OSPO industry for more time than, than that. Uh, I um, started in marketing, but then I also get a background in data science, so it's kind of um, challenging and I really like to be able to have like both perspective, like the business perspective and technical perspective all in one. So I sometimes when some people tell me, hey, what do you do? It's like, I'm just a hybrid because I, I love to do both things. I love to get into tech and programming and Python, but then I also like to make and work on a strategy and, and marketing and so on. Um, I initially, uh, I, I came from Viteria, that is a software development analytics company. I see some of my um, previous colleagues here as well. And there I get the possibility to engage with OSPOs all around the world, uh, more focused on metrics, on open source metrics and OSPO uh, metrics uh, standards. 
Uh, and then finally, I moved to, to Tutor Group at the OSPO program manager. In my search part time, I, I'm a yoga practitioner and I also like to do a lot of climbing, mountain, going to mountains and or hiking and so on. So you can reach out to me through Twitter and also I'm available on LinkedIn. So if you want to share with me anything, if you want to connect, let's connect. And finally, uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions or discussions to share, now it's your turn. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if, you have, if we have time for discussions or how much time do we have, but if someone would like to share anything. Maybe one question. What yeah. do you see between Europe, Europe and America in terms of uh, OSPOs and building OSPOs? Okay, so the main thing was uh, the time zone to engage with other, mm. like, you know, when you want to do the networking, it's sometimes difficult, like, hey, we're gonna arrange, now that in-person events are getting more and more um, uh, easy, or at least I'm, I'm positive about that. But, you know, having these gatherings and networking sessions, even virtual, uh, we cannot, we, we have to split because there, there are different time zones and uh, initially we had these gatherings in, in the States, but there are companies also here that would like to go gather and meet together and start sharing experience. So that's one of the main issues there. Um, talking with other people and other companies, I also see like uh, they have different ways of procedures. Like I can, for instance, GDPR here is an important issue that an OSPOS uh, might have uh, impact. But in uh, the States, not so, um, is not so highlighted. So there are certain things that maybe can change a bit. However, I still think that um, even though we have these small differences, and I think it's, it's healthy to, to have these groups uh, differentiated at some point, there are common goals and there are common things that uh, OSPOS in Europe can um, learn. Uh, from other other regions uh, that have been doing the same over the last years and, and can get a lot of knowledge. Okay, uh, I will go, okay, Chris, and then I will go with you. I was just gonna, sorry, I was just gonna comment that I see like intellectual property, you know, the level of like detail and care seems how much people care about that in the US versus Europe seems to be like the highlight of Europe. There's all, you know, the, the rules are fairly strict in terms of what it can Um, yes? Are you finding that OSPOs exist in organisations but they don't realise that they're actually OSPOs, they've kind of organically formed, you know, through people knowing or, you know, figuring out they have open source and they need to be able to either control it or understand it? You know, so, you know, are there more OSPOs out there that are unrecognised and maybe don't have an OSPO identity? Okay, yeah, so that's, I think this is, uh, has to do a lot with uh, branding and how OSPO initiatives are handled within organizations. Because I know some organizations in Europe, they don't call it OSPO, and maybe they never will. Uh, they have a like open source centers or open source, I have an open source team, or I'm just a single person managing OSPO or managing open source initiatives. So I think the, the word doesn't matter, actually. We tried to come up with a, with a single word just to not mix up things and, and get people crazy because at, at some point it's everything the same. If you're creating, if you want to uh, have build better relationships with the open source ecosystem within your organizations, that's an OSPO. And you can call it whatever you want and the organization can call it whatever you want and we can also have differentiations between 
big companies, small companies, medium companies, and, and that, can, that can affect the way we, we name this OSPOs and, and the way we, we have these teams in, in the OSPO. Yeah? Um, following on from David's question, actually. So developers generally know how to contribute, and uh, developers often are directly contributing. So putting an OSPO in front of them is just bureaucracy. So one of the challenges we've got is getting that visibility of the risks that developers are putting themselves under by going direct to communities, just releasing code without getting an intellectual property check, without understanding their code of conduct, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I don't know whether you've done any studies around, because you hear that there's various messages come down about you know, either hacks or people getting into trouble over doing these sort of things or being in contravention of licensing. But there's no real coordination showing you know, there's this impact to the industry of not doing an OSPO, isn't there? So. Yeah. Um, we, we've heard that uh, many times. You're not the first one that, um, that raised this, this issue. Um, what, what I think is um, in, in the OSPO service we've launched it, we, it's true that we don't mention a lot that, but doesn't matter. It, that doesn't mean that we cannot build resources around that and, and get some research around that. So I would recommend that uh, if people have the same issues, what was your name again? Yes, so, okay, awesome. Uh, if you have the same issue, um, just raise your issue for the next OSPO survey that it's in the GitHub repo at Twitter group and maybe we can have something and we can focus our resources and uh, the questions to that point and get something valuable and, and some, some insights. Yeah, Chris, you. That's, that's a really good one. Yep. Thank you. Um, so if there is any more question, any other questions,